Yo, yo, yo. Hey, what's up? What up, bro? Karen, what you got? An HD camera? <laughs> and crisp. What's up with y'all? Good, good. And the mic too. Dang. Damn. Why? I don't know. We got some some quality stuff today. I don't know got, if it's. I gotta level up. What's going on? <laughs> what? Nothing has changed though. I think really? the setting or no, something. It's crisp. Yeah. For, for some reason, it sounds really good. Oh, I think the setting. This is a better setting for it. Love it. So, what do you guys got, Felipe? If you want to start. Yeah, I'll start, brother. Um, you remember that that lead in Florida, four fifty novation? Yeah. His number dropped to four fifteen. Dang. Dang. <laughs> okay. It's and this was this was horrible. I'm just saying that he did not want to talk to me on the phone. So I had to have a whole I had to have like a whole text conversation. Okay. It was a bitch to do that. Do you do, do have you talked to him before at all? No, like I've been calling him and he just texted me back. He's saying Hey, we're, I'm, I'm thinking he thinks I'm you because it's all the same phone number in the system. And he texts me back and he says, hey, I'm just looking over our offers this weekend. And that's all he yeah. said. And then I said, well, okay, I get it. Let me, well, just please let me know what you're thinking of because maybe we could beat whatever offer you're, you're going to lean towards. And then we started, you know, chopping it up. And then I kind of got, found out his offer. You know, I know how to slide in there, you know, slide in the DMs. And uh, <laughs> it's a wild boy right here. <laughs> and um, but he's. It sounds like he's he. His his main main concern now is time. He wants quick. He wants to close like. Okay, so just to give you an understanding of what's going on with this lead, he just lost his wife, like a week or two ago. Got it. So that could be a reason why he doesn't want to get on the phone, and he only wants to text. Um. Ah oh, man. Cause I remember we had an offer at it wasn't we didn't even offer it yet. We just had like we just floated out the idea of a 150 novation. Dude, it's like it could work as a wholesale at 415, honestly. Here's the thing, he wants to he wants to close on the 21st. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then I told him I'm like because he already has an offer at 410, right? 410 mm -hmm. on the 21st, it closed. So now I know his best offer. So we, if we can beat that, and he said if we can offer him 415 at um, and close within the, this month, he'll probably go with us. Okay. But it's super hard to do this, you know, through text, you know, like you just can't get everything through text. You have to talk to them. Why? Because I don't know how to explain it. Like when you're talking, like physically talking to someone, you can get more out of them. You can like show your emotions and your tone and you can get understand more of a person. It's a lot easier to just talk to people. I mean, I, I did my best through text. I mean, I figured out his offers. I figured out what he wanted and everything. You can go on his file and look at all like, our whole conversation. No, that's a good job, bro. Yeah. I mean, I work with what I got. So ARV is 550. And that's, essentially, that's what essentially I got it needs no work. Yep. But it's super tight. Super tight. Because he wants a cash deal. Look at him. Put my calculator up. Because if we already do 75%, it already reaches 412 at 550. Hmm. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So what was your conversation like with him through text? Um, basically telling him, don't make a decision until we, we know what you want because maybe we can beat, you, meet, beat the, the other competition. And then the very last thing he said was he wants proof of, proof of funds. He wants us to send over an agreement. Um if we can do 415 and close this month. Okay. Yeah, 
You guys see my screen? Let me, let me open it up real quick. Yeah, I see it. So let's look at what this would look like, right? Say it took about three months to close on it, put it back up on the market and close again. And we're at and we're at 4.15, okay? Even let's say we got to put in 10,000 bucks. Let's see where our profit would be at. This would be at, um, so this is our analyzer. This is how we run numbers for our fix and flips, right? Uh, I don't know what this wholesale and assignment thing, I, I never even use it. I'm actually, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm going to delete all this stuff because we don't use it. Okay. So what this runs through, right? It runs through fix and flip numbers. So what does it take to buy a house and resell it? Buy a house, put some renovations into it and resell it. Let's, let's walk through this really quick. Up at the top, you have your after repair value. And then you also have your holding costs. How long is it going to take to do the whole entire project from the day that we close to the day that we close again, right? And then obviously up here, we have our purchase number. Um, we're factoring in title insurance and closing costs in order to buy the deal. So it's going to cost us about 27, 427 to buy the deal. You know, we're probably actually a little bit more than that. Um, because we got to pay our hard money lender some money, but let's just roll through this a little bit more. Now, let's just say we got to put in ten thousand dollars worth of renovations. There's your ten thousand bucks for reno. Maybe you got a couple hundred bucks for maintenance every single month. Like they might have a pool or something like that. Um, and maybe some land. We got to pay a landscaper to mow the lawn or something like that. Here's the big thing: holding costs. What is this? Holding costs. Is essentially what you're going to pay the hard money lender in order to borrow the money from them. So typically, like our hard money lender is lending us 90% of the purchase price and 100% of the rehab. So on this particular property, we'd be borrowing 393.975. Um, this is including. This is including the renovations too. And then we're going to be paying every single month, 12% annualized to the hard money lender. This is just straight interest. Then we got, we got these things called points. This is just money that you essentially pay the hard money lender. Like you, you legitimately have to pay the hard money lender in order to borrow the money. This is just like a, a flat fee. So points, this, our particular lender is at three points. So we got to pay him 3% of whatever we're borrowing right up front. And that doesn't go down like the principal or anything. That's just a straight fee. Okay. Um, then you got taxes, utilities, all that type of stuff. So in order to hold this property, it's going to cost us about $31,000. Okay. Then we got to sell the house. So we're get, we got to maybe we'll stage it and stuff, get some pictures. Then we're going to have to deal with closing costs again and some concessions. What are concessions? Concessions are essentially what the buyer is telling us that, um, that we have to do. Maybe we got to fix a window or something like that. Um, that's what we call concessions and binzers. Okay. Then we have, 3% to the listing agent, 3% to the buyer's agent. Usually our people are at 2.5% but um, on each end, but we're just juicing the numbers up because we always want to be conservative. Okay, now let's get to the fun part. Um, this is really what I care about. Total estimated profit. So on this particular deal, if we closed on it and put 10,000 bucks into it and resold it at 550, we would make $31,000. Okay. So does that make sense? You buyers look at this a little like 
some some sort of different ways, right? We'd probably want to wholesale this deal because it's not in our market. Um, so like, does that make sense for a buyer? All depends. Buyers are all different. They some people like ROI. Some people like, hey, I just want to make ten thousand bucks a month. Shit, in that case, that works. This is only going to take three months. They'll take thirty something thousand bucks. Some people um, are more like, hey, I want to make. 10% of this after repair value. I want to make at least 50, um, 55 grand. You know, if I'm going to come up with all that money, I want to make at least 10% of this. So every buyer has a different buy box. So you got to go out and find that buy, that buyer and figure out their buy box. But what we're looking at right here is like, does this make sense for an investor? Let's, let's throw our fee on here. Let's call this 425. 21 grand essentially is what a buyer would make. Does that make sense? It's super, super tight. So. With that being said, it's so tight and it's not in our market. Yeah. Um, so I think what you do, bro, I think you lock it up at 415. With a 21 close date with um, an inspection period. And then we just figure it out. <laughs> right. No, but for real, then we just no, have. For real, people, yeah. Then we have people. I was thinking walk. of that. I was thinking of doing that. Like, like, no matter what, would have to, even if it was a deal, like a smoking deal, would have to do that regardless. You know what I mean? Yep. But just let him know, lock it up and just let him know, hey, we got to get our guys in there just to see. Okay. Cool. Now that makes me wonder. Um, because he wants me to send over the agreement, right? But I don't want to just send it over to him, and then he just because we obviously know he's he's fishing for offers right now to make a decision at the end of the week. Okay. And I can't I can't talk to him over the phone to get him to like. Get My him boss to won't let me send over the agreement until I get you on the phone. Okay. We need we need a verbal in order for it to be um legitimate cuz if we do, if if we don't, I don't know who's behind your phone texting, right? I like that. I like that idea. I'm going to text him right now. Okay. Um, what sorry, I, it's just one more. Go ahead. If you could send me the proof of funds, I don't know if just text it to me or email it to me so I can just have that. Yeah, I got you. Okay. I'll do that right now. Karen, what do you got? Yeah, um, I have a lead right here. Um it's not it's not too much of a hot lead. Um, but I just want to know what my next conversation should look like. Okay. Um, I talked to him when I was just going through the system and recently, and uh, he's more like he's an attorney and uh, he's slowly um, selling his properties because he mentioned that he's 71 years old and he doesn't want his loved ones to like undergo probate once he dies. So he's slowly... Um, getting rid of his properties. Actually, one of it is being listed right now as a for sale by owner. So okay. he doesn't want to list it with a realtor since he's he's an attorney himself. So he would rather just um go and for his sell it by himself. And uh, he has two other properties. Um, I think with the numbers that he has on. On the properties, I don't. I don't think it would be a cash deal for us. But um, when I went into the call, um, I didn't really. I didn't really get into that call. Like, did everything and uh, tell him that. I mean, we, I did somehow tell him that his best bet is to list it. But um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get to the point where I teed him up for seller financing or something like that. So what I I ended the call by saying I'd run this over with my partner and he mentioned that 
the tenants are it's all rented but he hasn't um told the tenants where this plan of selling it because either way the buyer would take care of the tenants anyway that's what he was looking to do so i end up with telling him that um, he's, um, I would check back with the pictures that he would send us, since we're not, we're not, we can't. Okay, so he wants that. he wants a retail price for his house, and you're like, this isn't a deal. How do I go in and pitch creative finance? Yeah, like going back and tell him that. Yeah, we're not a we buyer for you. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think we're going to be a good fit here. Um, however, I did talk to my partner, and we might be able to. Come up to your number if you give us some time. Would you would you um, entertain something like that? And if he says yes, you just say, "Okay, great." My partner is the one who deals with all those types of deals. Can he give you a call tomorrow? Okay. Super simple. Hey, I'm not I'm not your buyer here. Like, we're we're not even going to be close on a number, but I think we might be able to come up to your number if you give us some time to pay you off. Would you entertain something like something like that? Once he agrees. You set the call up for me. We don't even have to go to the picture stuff. Is he already at retail? Yeah, I, I asked for his lowest number. He said that he doesn't want to say his lowest number because um, it's more like he mentioned that it's more like he's killing the deal for himself. Okay, so it sounds like we might have a deal here. We just got to get his lowest number. Yeah, if he doesn't want to tell you, that means he has one. Yeah, that's what, what he said. Uh, it says he also mentioned that it, um, it, it might need some around like 10,000 repairs, and he's not thinking about doing that. Okay. He doesn't plan to do it. So, Felipe, how, how do you think we can go about getting this guy's lowest number in a way about, in a way rather than just asking him, hey, what's your lowest number? Actually, before you answer that, Karen, how did you try to get his lowest number? So at the end, more like as I was about to end the call, um, I told him that if we were going to take care of the tenants in it, he doesn't have it would be a smooth transaction for him, and he doesn't have to do the repairs, and mm -hmm. uh, um, we'll take care of the closing costs and the commissions that needs to be uh, paid for. What is your stuff. absolutely lowest number? That's yeah. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, that's what. Good I job, did. good job, teeing up. I love what you did. Hey, what if we can take care of everything for you, right? What is your mm -hmm. absolutely lowest number? I say things like that all the time. However, sometimes we're dealing with somebody like a lawyer. Yeah. Right? Like a lawyer knows not to give his lowest number. So, Felipe, what can we do in a situation like this? So, um, immediately what I think of is a third-party story, right? So, okay. we bring up a property in his area, in his neighborhood, saying that it closed for this amount which is under his number that he's asking for and see what he says about that number so for example if he's asking for 300 and you say oh a property just closed for 280 you know a few a few streets down i mean would you even entertain anything along there and just see what he says i like that yep yep i like that i'll, I'll use that i do like it I, I'll use that as like a very um, last resort type of thing. Okay. Okay. But what can we do like to work the numbers with him? How can we start working the numbers with him without essentially telling him like, hey, you know, one down the street, Sophie X, would you, would you, would you entertain that? Because essentially that's like an, an offer. Yeah, an offer. This, right? guy's a smart, this guy's a smart lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He knows what that means. Well, I guess you could literally work the numbers with them. So you grab a, a comp property and you work it backwards to find out where we have to be. And you work it right in front of him and kind of get him to realize how much his property is worth. Yeah, ask him. Ask him, hey, if you put that $10,000 worth of work into the property, how much do you think this thing would sell for on the retail market? Okay. Or you ask him, you just assume, what did his realtor say? What did your realtor say the house would sell for on the market? And then you start working the numbers back 
from that price. Let's just say he said $500,000. Yeah, my realtor said if I put 10,000 bucks into the property that would probably get somewhere around 500,000. Okay, got it. Cool, makes a ton of sense. So essentially what you're looking at, right, is um, you know, after you pay your realtor and after you deal with all the closing costs and concessions and stuff like that, you're really looking to walk away with about 460 net in your pocket before you put the $10,000 in, is that right? And you get him to realize like, hey, you're going to have to pay a realtor to do all this stuff. Okay? Yeah. Then, then you have another $10,000 to negotiate with. But then you also got to put the 10,000 bucks in. So like if you think about raw profit, you're really probably at like 450. So you're looking to walk away net in your pocket with about 450k. Is that right? Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Then Karen, you go with I mean, if we just took care of everything for you, you didn't even have to deal with any buyers coming in. Like that wasn't even a thought in your mind. What would be fair? Or like there's so many freaking ways to get the seller's number. I love this one. This one's one of my favorites. If so with that being said, right? Like after you sell this thing at 5 at 500 grand and you put 10,000 bucks worth of work into it, you're really at like 450. With that being said, if you were my partner, if we were on the same team, we we're buying this house together. Where do you think we'd have to be? Does that Not make bad. sense? Yeah. Now you're really, really working it with him. Now you're getting on the same team. Now you're like literally underwriting the deal with him. Mm -hmm. So it's not get, it's not like convincing him like, oh yeah, your property's, your property isn't worth that. You're working, you're on his team. You're literally on the same side of the desk working the numbers with him. So what I would do, Karen, um, if you have, if you ever have trouble, especially with getting the number, Felipe is really good at getting the number out of people. So feel free to shoot him a task or shoot him a comment in, in the lead and Felipe will hop on the, the phone and try to get the lowest number. Mm -hmm. And it's also um, the way you say it too, like super yeah. freaking confident, like super like I own you. Like, I don't want to, I don't want like it make, make them feel like, like fuck, like. I have to say something because like now obviously it's sales. So not everything works a hundred percent of the time, but it's all about like numbers. You want it to work most of the time. So when I go in and I ask for a number, you know, I like, I actually learned from Mike. Cause I was, I used to ask it kind of like in a joking way. And it's like, I cut that stuff out. So now I go in, like I go in, like I'm going in for a kill. I'm like, what is your absolute lowest number? So we can get this done today. Or like, you know, something super fast, super straight to the point. And like usually they'll like cripple and they'll they'll say something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Some serious some seriousness in your tonality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Super super. I do I do I do remember that, bro. You, like, um, I think when before probably maybe like three months ago or something like that, when you were trying to get a number, you'd be like, huh, "What's your lowest number?" <laughs> right, and we're making we're making it a joke, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love it. It's it's great because it shows your growth. Like mm -hmm. I freaking love it. But um, right, it, like it, it it makes the seller feel like that this this is a joke. They're set. They they all, they're only gonna sell maybe one or two houses in their entire life. This shit ain't a joke. Yep. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I love it. Love it. Love it. So Karen, um, I'm gonna leave this one up to you. Do what you think is best. Either hop on the phone with the seller and try to go over some things that we just went over today. Try to get the lowest number. I would say 100% before you even do any creative finance or anything like that, I would get his lowest number for sure. Yeah. That's a, that's a must. We always cancel out cash before anything. So we got to cancel out cash. In order to cancel out cash, you have to find out his absolutely lowest number. Um. And I would either go in and do it yourself or have Felipe do it and listen to the call. 
Okay. Love it. Um, so, yeah, dog, you going to lock that thing up, Felipe, or what? Yeah, man. I just sent over the the proof of funds and the text. I can read it out to you. Let me, let me see what you think. I said, hey, Troy, uh, we would like to move forward at 415 and close on September 21st. Uh, would you be ready to move forward today? I'll also need to get you on the phone for a verbal yes, just to confirm. And then like in quotations, uh, it's a company policy. Love it. <laughs> so if I get him to respond, actually, let me refresh the page. Let me see if he responded already. No, not yet. Um, yeah, I'll be looking out for his, uh, his text. Cool. All right, people, do you guys have anything else you guys want to go over? No, that's, that's what I had for today, that guy. Good job, bro. This would be a first one locking up through text. Shit. <laughs> it happens all the time. Yeah, everything's possible. It's just. No, for sure. I feel crippled when I'm not talking to someone because I have to figure out other ways to show i don't know other ways to negotiate through words and not just like growing bro yeah inflection getting crippled you you're going through a growth period that's it you're being more resourceful that's the word for this week resourcefulness how do we be as resourceful as possible Mm i love it okay we got Monday off. Let's get back rocking and rolling Tuesday, hitting these freaking KPIs and getting deals done. Let's rock and roll. You're Guys, right. you want us to – oh, actually, this lead that we're talking about right now, this wholesale lead, this is a silver mm-hmm. home lead. This is a JV lead. So if you guys want us to lock up your deals and get deals done – for you without you having to talk to the seller, without you having to go out and find a buyer and all the BS and transaction coordinating and all this stuff, let us take care of it because this is what we do. You know what I'm saying? So go to silverhomies.com. If you have any leads that you want to submit for killers like Karen, Felipe, and myself to hop on the phone, close your seller, and we'll deal with the whole process. So everybody have a freaking wonderful Labor Day weekend. Um, few few things that I want to go over. One, I just put out a crazy video for lead generation. So if you're watching this, go to my YouTube channel and look at the lead generation video that I just put out. I put out a day in the life earlier this week as well. Two really good videos, but I'm going to start putting out a lot more educational videos to provide some more value to you guys. So um, make sure you're subscribing to the channel because then other people get to see these videos. So Subscribe, like the video. Last thing, me and Daryl Ellison have wholesale hard knocks tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time. That's every single Saturday. We do that every Saturday. You can go back to my YouTube channel and look at all the things we've done. We've had people hitting us up saying, yo, the sales training that you guys did like changed my life. I got deals already from it. This is literally like three days later. So like the YouTube channel is no joke. You know what I'm saying, Felipe? Like, it's no joke, bro. <laughs> I can see it. Freaking that, that that one video he's talking about, even though I knew everything because he Mike's already taught me, it refreshed my memory because I obviously I'm a human, so I forget stuff. So it's it, even if you know what you're talking about, if you know what you're doing, you will forget some stuff. You know, you're not a computer, you don't remember everything. Dude, I have read the same sales books like five or six times over yeah. and over again. And you learn something new every time you read, most likely. Yes, 100%. Like, literally, bro. Um, Sandler, that that book that we went over with the sales training, that video. I've probably read that book, like, maybe four or five times. Grant Cardone's books, all his sales books, I've read, like, four or five times. Like, I... You got to go back. You got to go back and listen to it. Because the second... Because here's what happens. You grow, and then you listen to it a different way. Or you yeah. read it. I listen because I don't read. I don't like reading. 
I like listening. So I listen to the audio book, but I listen differently the second time mm-hmm. or the third time or the fourth time because I'm a different person at that point. But cool. You guys have a freaking wonderful Labor Day weekend. Good job this week. Um, let's get it rocking and rolling. Good work. Nerd. Peace out, everybody. So.